Welcome to Microsoft Access 2010 tutorial. This tutorial will introduce fundamental concepts and operations, but it will not cover advanced features and functions of Microsoft Access 2010. Here I will show you how to identify the parts of the screen, define fields and field properties and construct tables, enter and edit records in a table, find and sort data, and design custom queries to display data. To open and edit an existing database, move your cursor to the menu on the left and select Open File. In this tutorial, we will create a new database. To do this, select the type of database you'd like from the available templates menu. The default option in Microsoft Access is Blank Database, and that's what we'll do. Unlike Word documents, Excel spreadsheets, and PowerPoint presentations, Access requires you to name and save your document before you can edit it. The file name here will be Books. Then click Create. Now that we have created a new database, let's go over some of the components of Access. You can see that this menu on the left is called All Access Objects. An Access database consists of several different components and each one is called an object. For example, you can see that Table 1 is listed as an object. In Access, you can have more than one table, just as you can have more than one worksheet in programs like Microsoft Excel. The table is the main unit of data storage in an Access database. Usually, a table contains related information on a specific topic. Within a table, we have columns. These are called fields in Access. And we have rows, which are called records. The field defines a type of data. An example of a field might be state, for which a record would be Texas or New Mexico. Now that we know what we're looking at, let's get started. In order to organize the data, we should first define the fields or columns for our table. To do this, we must select Design View from the View Selector. When I click on View Selector, I can see Design View and Data Sheet View. Let's select Design View. When I select Design View, Access will ask me to name and save my table. I'll call this table Bears. and then I'll save. Let's go over some of the things you are seeing in Design View. The field name, the first column, is where you specify the title you will give to the field you're designing. The data type refers to the properties of the field. The field only has one data type, such as character, number, or date. Description is useful for providing more details about what should go into each field or what the label means if the label represents something abstract. The primary key is a value that can be used to identify a unique record in a table. For example, there might be two books with the same author, so author is not a good primary key. However, every book has a unique call number in a library catalog, so that would be a good choice for primary key. Let's begin to design our bears table. Each field I make in this table should be some piece of information that I'd like to know about these books. I'll start with call number. The data type will be text because I will be entering both numbers and letters. And the description that I'll enter is call number from the UT catalog. I'll go ahead and enter a field for title, author, year, and subject. You can see that I have entered the information for title, author, year, and subject, as well as their data types and a description of each field. Now that I've entered all the fields, I'll want to return to the data view by clicking on the view selector once again. Access will remind me that I should save my table in order to edit it. Click Yes. Once in the data view, 
I can see that the fields I created on the design side are now here and I can enter information for books I'd like to have in my database. I'll enter that information now. Now you can see that I've entered data for three books, call number, a title, an author's last name, a year, and a subject. Let's look at some of the things we can do with the data in our table. First, let's look at sorting data. You can see that in this menu ribbon at the top, there's options here for sorting and filtering data. Some of the easiest sorts to do are alphabetical sorting. Select the column that you'd like to sort, for example, author, and then select the sorting option that works for you, ascending or descending order, and I can remove the sort. In addition to sorting, another good option for looking at data is the Find option. Click Find in the menu. Access is giving me a suggestion that I might be looking for the word Coplo. Instead, I'd like to search for Duval. Click Find Next, and Access will show you where that word occurs. Click Cancel to close this box. Because we will be doing some tasks that involve more than one table, let's create a second table. Click on the Create tab, then select Table, and you'll see a new table appear. To edit this table, go back to the View Selector and select Design View. Once again, Access will ask you to name your table. I'll call this table Authors and click OK. In this table, I will create fields for last name, first name, and specialty. Now that I've entered information for the field, data type, and description, Let's go back to the data view and enter information in my author's table. I'm going to click on the symbol here that looks like a spreadsheet. Access will remind me that I need to save my table. Click Yes. Here in the data side, I have entered information for three authors, their last names, their first names, and their literary specialty. Now that we have two tables, let's create table relationships. Table relationships help to prevent the duplication of information in a database by repeating fields in more than one table. Table relationships are established to link fields together from different tables. To create a database relationship, let's click on Database Tools. Once there, we'll click on Relationships. Access opens a dialog box asking which tables we'd like to use. Select the table and click Add. Select your second table and click Add again. Once you've selected all the tables you'd like, click Close. Next, we'll specify which fields should have a relationship. The last name of the author in my Authors table corresponds with the Author field in my Bears table, which was specified as the last name of an author. To create the relationship, Click Last Name and hold down the cursor button as I drag over to Author. When I release my cursor, a dialog box opens in Access, asking me if the relationship has been established correctly. In my table called Authors, the field Last Name should correspond with the table called Bears and the field Author. If this is correct, I'll click Create. You can see that a path has been drawn so that you can see the relationship that was created. Now you'll want to save the relationship. Use your right-click option to click on Relationships. The option to save pops down. Now that we've created a relationship, let's create a query. A query is a question that you ask a database, such as, how many books are written by a certain author in this database? Who wrote a book in a certain year? Queries select records from one or more tables in a database and match the criteria you set. They can be viewed, analyzed, and sorted. The resulting collection of records in a query is called a Dynaset. This Dynaset can be saved for later use. To create a query, click on the Create tab, then select Query Design. A dialog box will open in Access, asking you which tables you'd like to look at. Select the table and click Add. Close the dialog box. 
Add fields from the tables to the new query by double-clicking the field name in the table boxes. Once you have specified all the information you'd like to see in your query, click Run. This query showed us all of the records that came up that matched the specified information. If I'd like to specify something further, I can enter that information here in the criteria box, such as nonfiction, and click Run once again. Now I can see that my results have changed, and I only have one entry. Thanks for viewing this tutorial on Microsoft Access 2010.